Hello, my name is Abigail, and today I'm going to talk to you about low-code, no-code platforms, how it's a part of our Monday journey, and how it allowed us to move faster and achieve better results. I joined Monday at the end of 2017 to a then 90 people company, which since then grew to be more than 600 people. So I'm really proud to have taken a part in Monday's growth into a unicorn. I'm a team lead in the R&D team. My team is the Autopilot core team, which focuses on automations and integrations, allowing users to create rich automated workflows. We already saved more than 500 million human actions using automations and integrations. Those are mundane, repetitive actions that our users didn't have to do. On my free time, I'm an a cappella singer and arranger. It's kind of my full-time hobby. At Monday, we have varied kinds of clients. They come from different industries and different countries, and even different team sizes, from teams of two to teams of thousands. Those teams really vary from each other, so they have varied needs. And about 70% of those clients are non-technical, so they can't write their own development solutions for their needs. What do they use Monday for? They use Monday as a work operating system made of building blocks that work well with each other to create workflows for different kinds of customers. Teams can create their own custom applications to fit their needs by dragging and dropping from dozens of building blocks to shape any workflow in minutes. So it's quick and flexible to build processes or integrate with existing tools or collaborate across teams with no developer needed. With this short background about Monday.com, Let's dive into low-code, no-code, and how it's a part of our story. So what is low-code, no-code, and why is it interesting these days? Both low-code and no-code are strategies that can be used to open a platform to the world and allowing customization and workflows to be built on top of it. The distinction is not about the need to write code. It's more about the types of people who are going to use these platforms to build applications. In no-code, these are known developers, business users that look for drag and drop solutions and simple configurations. In low code solutions, the target audience is professional developers looking for a platform to save some of the heavy lifting so they can focus on the business logic itself. Low code platforms save pain points like the build system, packaging, releasing, infrastructure, or monitoring. These platforms make developers' lives easier. Why is low-code, no-code interesting now? It's expected to grow dramatically in the next few years. While in 2018, it was a sizable $4 billion market. Look at the estima estimation. Look at the estimation for just two years from now with more than $21 billion market size. That's 5x growth. There are already more than 200 vendors that market their products as low-code platforms. So just imagine where this is going. According to Gartner, which is one of the world's biggest IT research firms, the vast majority of companies are going to use low-code platforms in the near future, with more than 65% of development going to be done on low-code platforms by 2024. It means that now is really the time to start to understand this trend and figure out how it relates to each and every one of us. So now that we understand this opportunity, I'd like to share with you the journey that we took here at Monday.com in transforming the work operating system into a low-code, no-code platform. Our journey begins about three years ago, and it's about the same time I joined Monday. So I'm really lucky to witness this journey firsthand. It followed my own journey from a full-stack developer in a 20-something member R&D into a team lead in the 90-member R&D. So we started with the basics, but maybe the most important phase of all which is product market fit for our platform. We were looking to provide teams with an intuitive visual project management platform that they can use to manage any type of business process with a simple first approach to give value users need when they need it. We want to make it accessible to any kind of team, even those with no technical skills at all. We started with a board. Boards are the easiest way to streamline any kind of workflow. It's easy to use and change. It's flexible, so people can use columns and rows to represent projects, tasks, and many other kinds of information. 
People can collaborate, invite their teammates, and work with other people. We created a tool that we felt people actually loved to use. We then learned that teams also wanted to connect to external tools, so that was our next step. Our customers wanted the flexibility to integrate with many different kinds of systems and data sources. So we opened an API and enabled a so-called high-code solution, allowing developers to create their own code on top of Monday. But if you recall, many of our customers are less technological, so they're not interested or really can't make the effort to develop on top of an API. So what we wanted to achieve is the richness of customizable flows without the need to write a single line of code. So this is when customizable building blocks came to the picture. We wanted to make the platform extremely flexible to allow any customer to drag and drop the functionality they need when they need it. We wanted to create table-driven applications for the user's businesses. And this is really when the no-code stage started. We started this with having seven types of columns on the board. And in a hackathon of our entire R&D team, in only a few days, we created 20 more, allowing richer customizations. So this is a cycle that we love going through at Monday. We start small with the core features, like seven columns. We then stop to create the joint infrastructure to allow creating much more at ease. And then we have a full-blown R&D hackathon to really make it explode and create a whole lot more. It's also the first hackathon that I took part of in Monday. So now we have more valuable boards and more verticals and use cases using those different kinds of columns. Later, we took this approach to add more features to the board. It's no longer just a table. We wanted to add views to add different visualizations of the same content of the board, like charts and Kanban, and my biased favorite, which is the form view, which is the one that I developed. It allows defining questions, publishing them online, and gathering all the answers into a board. So with those columns and views, people can now create their own no-code applications on top of Monday, like an IT orders app. People can publish a form online, the answers get back into a board. A chart view can show which item was ordered the most. Or a map view can showcase where the items were invited from all over the globe. These building blocks can work well together, and we gain this compounding effect of all the existing building blocks working at once. Later, we wanted to add processes and operations to our applications by creating rich, automated, no-code workflows. We wanted to save valuable time for our users, to let the platform work for them. We wanted to create automations to save repetitive manual tasks to, so that users can focus on what matters the most and making an impact. So we created the automation recipes, where users can define what they need, and the platform can do the rest for them. The definition is done in simple English, and which later transforms into behind-the-scenes code. So it's the same concept of no code, where with simple drag and drop and configurations, creating building blocks to create sentences. And again, we saved more than 500 million actions this way. These actions can be inside Monday, we call those automations, or external to Monday in different kinds of tools, we call those integrations. So if first in the API step, People needed to write their own code to connect to third parties. Now we do this job for them. With no code needed, people can connect to their favorite tools. And again, we took this same approach of a development cycle. We started small uh, with adding only a few integrations in my team, the Autopilot core team. Then we stopped to create the infrastructure to create more integrations at ease. And then we had a hackathon for the entire R&D to create a whole lot more. And we're at about 50 integration types. As an engineer, I think this also makes us develop better. When we imagine what the entire R&D is going to need in order to develop in a small period of time, it makes us think better about distribution of responsibilities in the code, to have better documentation, better extraction of common infrastructure, 
So it really helps us as an engineering team as well. So now our no-code apps have custom boards, visualizations, and automations. And it opened many opportunities for us, this no-code phase. But it was still limiting. At the end, the applications were a combination of existing building blocks. And it's not enough. New building blocks must be developed by our own R&D team. So it's both the development of these building blocks, but also the support, the bugs, the maintenance, all those need to be internal. So what we decided to do is to open the platform even more with a low-code framework, which we call Monday Apps. It allows any developer to build their own solutions to any business need on top of the Monday work operating system. Developers can write code to create their own views, widgets, or integrations on top of Monday with the same low-code principles to save heavy lifting from developers. It can be serverless. Developers can just upload their zip file. Monday takes care of the packaging and the releasing phases. Developers also get a lot of built-in givens to their code to allow them to really focus on the business side. With infinite flexibility, we can now achieve any type of use case. It's similar to apps on a mobile phone where it's the same device, but many different capabilities from different applications. Any developer can write a solution or a workflow, and they can also write their own building blocks that can then be mixed and matched with other building blocks in the ecosystem. Let me share with you the story of how we're releasing this apps framework. It was built in the past eight months or so, and as it's aiming for developer clients, we tried it on ourselves first. So in mid-March, during COVID-19 lockdown, all of the R&D members created 20 new apps in a remote hackathon for only two days. We were trying to simulate being clients, so being external developers, so no Monday dev superpower was used in the process. And if you remember that I created the former firm view, now I had the task to reimagine what a user online might like to add to it and create a whole new view on top of it. So it's really a full circle for me. Let me show you another cool example of an application that we built in just two days. It's the whiteboard app, which is a view on top of a board, giving freeform space to sketch, brainstorm, and collaborate live. In the end of the hackathon, we did a live at home presentation of all the new apps, and the people's minds were really blown. The next phase was to open this to the world. So we took uh, 19 external teams across the globe, and the results were amazing. They built a lot of new apps in just two days. Some were imaginative that we didn't even think about, and some were actual things that we were wishing to do and planning to do if we only just had more time. So it generally felt like we gained new developers in a moment. The next step of Monday Apps is actually going on right now, and I'm sure you're going to hear more about it in the next few days as the, in the Apps Challenge. And we also want to build a public marketplace to allow developers share and monetize their created applications. So let's recap the flow in the three main phases that we had. First, we focused on product market fit building a platform that brings real value to our users. We develop it, and the API allows external developers to write their own high-code solutions. Next, we went for the no-code platform, using customizable building blocks, allowing non-technical users to build their own apps on top of Monday, combining columns, views, or automations. And finally, we have the low-code phase, which allows external developers to create their own building blocks that can later be mixed and matched together. Low-code, no-code gave us a lot of internal benefits. As an R&D team, the first thing to remember is that development is not just a one-time effort of writing code. It's also a lot about the support, the maintenance, the feature requests, and those two are out there in the world. Being an R&D team lead is really close to heart trying to plan the most impactful iterations I can for my team. I can really focus on what matters. Secondly, the low-code system makes us develop better. It makes us better engineers, thinking about the design and architecture of our code, splitting it better, joint responsibilities, joint infrastructure and documentation, because we need to think about those external developers. 
and as the R&D team itself is in hyper growth, it really means a lot to us. And finally, this process that we like to do uh, of the hackathons is a process that really helps us be better engineers. We start with the core features, developing them. Then we add the infrastructure to allow us to build more with these. And then we multiply, whether internally in our R&D or now externally with external developers. Low code, no code is a huge win for us at Monday.com. It allows us to focus on what matters on what's important to the majority of our customers and build the best-in-class product we can build for this leftmost side of this graph. We also enable others, partners or other developers, to build their own solutions on top of the platform. These are the public apps. And the final part is the long tail of private apps that solve specific problems for specific users. Even as our R&D team grows, we still want our focus to be the most impactful ones. So instead of adding more types of columns or more types of views, we want to think what's the next column or the next view. Instead of thinking and working on the long tail of this graph, we want to create new graphs. So this is what low code, no code gave us. It gave us infinite flexibility. It increased the number of builders we have to infinite. It allowed us to focus on the core, to reduce our time to market, and to leverage current solutions with ease. We think it can fit any type of business. And maybe it can also fit your business needs. Thank you very much.